What's up everybody, Nick Dwyer back for the 10th inning with another episode of This Day in Sports History. In yesterday's episode, we not only saw someone get two grand slams in one game, which is rare enough, but we saw Tony Cloninger, a pitcher for the Atlanta Braves, become the only pitcher in MLB history to have two grand slams in one game. We don't have anything like that today, but we do have a plethora of Wimbledon championships to talk about. So if you're new to the channel, you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. This day in sports history. We start out today in 1890 at the Wimbledon Finals on the women's side. Lena Rice gets her only major victory on the single side, defeating May Jax 6-4, 6-1. One year later in the 1891 Wimbledon Final, this time on the men's side, Wilfred Baddeley wins the first of three Wimbledon single titles, defeating Joshua Pym 6-4, 1-6, 7-5, 6-0. Not only would this be his first of three Wimbledon victories, but this would also be the first of three major victories on the single side. One year later in 1892, we stay on the men's side. It's like we have a repeat from 1891. Wilfred Baddeley once again defeated Joshua Pym 4-6, 6-3, 6-3, 6-2, 6-2 in four sets to win his second of three Wimbledons and the second of three majors. 12 years later in 1904, we get off Wimbledon, but we stay with tennis at the International Lawn Tennis Challenge. The Doherty brothers beat Paul de Borman and William Lemaire 6-0, 6-1, 6-3 to give the British Isles a 3-0 lead over Belgium, which they would end up winning 5-0 the next day. Now we move back to Wimbledon though. In 1906, Lawrence Doherty beat Frank Risley 6-4, 4-6, 6-2, 6-3 to win his fifth straight Wimbledon singles title and his sixth and final major. We stay on the men's side in 1907. Norman Brooks becomes the first non-Englishman and the first Southpaw to win the Wimbledon championship, beating Arthur Gore 6-4, 6-2, 6-2. This would be the first of three majors on the single side for Brooks. Get a little break in the action here. 1907, in his sixth title defense, Tommy Burns knocked out Bill Squires to remain the heavyweight champion. One year later, we moved to Major League Baseball in 1908. New York Giants pitcher George Wiltsey no-hit the Philadelphia Phillies in a 1-0 victory after a 10-inning game. This was the first game of a doubleheader between the Giants and the Phillies that day, and Wiltsey, 10 innings pitched, 5 hits allowed, and what ruined the perfect game for him was in the 9th inning after a controversial call on a 1-2 pitch that years later the umpire said, Yes, I did mess that call up. It was a strike. He ended up hitting the pitcher, the 27th batter in the game, to lose his perfect game. The Giants would score the next inning, though. He would shut the door. They would end up getting the victory, 1-0, in 10 innings, and the no-hitter. Move up two years later to 1910, and in Boston, we have the fight of the century going on when Jack Johnson defeated James J. Jeffries via technical knockout in 15 rounds. For Johnson, this would be his fifth title defense and he would retain the World Heavyweight Boxing title. We stay with Jack Johnson now, but move to 1912. Johnson would end up defeating Jim Flynn by disqualification in nine rounds to retain the World Heavyweight title. Also in 1912, we have another no-hitter when George Mullen of the Detroit Tigers no-hit the St. Louis Browns in a 7-0 victory. Mullen on the day, nine innings pitch, five walks a lot, five strikeouts. This will be the first no-hitter in Detroit Tigers history. Back to Wimbledon in 1913 on the women's side, Dorothea Chambers would end up beating Winifred McNair 6-0, 6-4 to win her sixth of seven Wimbledon championships and sixth of seven majors. One year later in 1914, we remain at Wimbledon, remain on the women's side. Dorothea Chambers once again would win her seventh and last Wimbledon single title, defeating Ethel Larcombe 7-5, 6-4 in straight sets. This would also be her third back-to-back of her career at Wimbledon. Stay with Wimbledon on the men's side. Norman Brooks would beat four-time defending champion Anthony Wilding 6-4, 6-4, 7-5 to win his third and final major of his career on the single side. Another little break here, we go to boxing in 1919 and 1923. This time we go to Jack Dempsey. In 1919, Dempsey would end up beating champion Jess Willard, who had to retire in the third round. This would be the first time Dempsey would end up getting the title in one of the greatest reigns of all time. Four years later in 1923, Dempsey would end up beating Tommy Gibbons on points 
after 15 rounds to retain the heavyweight title in his fourth defense. Now we go right back to Wimbledon though in 1924 on the women's side. Kitty McCain defeated Helen Wills 4-6, 6-4, 6-4 for her first of two Wimbledon single titles and first of two major titles. 1925, we go to the men's side at Wimbledon. Rene Lacoste defeated Jean Barotra 6-3, 6-3, 4-6, 8-6 to win his first of two Wimbledon titles and the second of seven majors. Five years later in 1930, on the women's side at Wimbledon, Helen Wills Moody wins her fourth straight Wimbledon single title after beating Elizabeth Ryan 6-2, 6-2 in straight sets. This would also be her 13th of 19 majors on the single side. 1931, we move to the men's side and Sidney Wood Jr. would beat Frank Shields in a walkover by default after an ankle injury prevented Shields from playing. This would be the only major of Wood Jr.'s career. One year later in 1932, Don Bradman makes an appearance once again on this channel. Don Bradman would end up scoring 260 runs in North America as they would play in Western Ontario. This would be a North American scoring record. Back to Wimbledon though, in 1936 on the women's side, Helen Jacobs wins her only Wimbledon title, defeating Hildy Sperling 6-2, 4-6, 7-5. This will also be the final of five majors for Jacobs. Three years later in Major League Baseball, we have two events. One, we have the luckiest man speech by Lou Gehrig, but we also have someone who would also hit two grand slams in a game. First in the Red Sox game, third baseman Jim Tabber would hit a record time two grand slams in one game in an 18-12 victory versus the Phillies. Tabber would become only the second player ever to do so. He would be joined by more in the future, but at this point, only the second to do so. Then at Yankee Stadium, Lou Gehrig would become the first MLB player ever to have his number retired, number four. The same day, he would give his appreciation speech, the luckiest man in the world. Now in 1947, at the British Open, Fred Daly, with a score of 21 over, oddly enough, wins his only British Open, one stroke ahead of runners-up, Reg Horn and Frank Stranahan. Back to Wimbledon, though, in 1947. Jack Kramer on the men's side would win his only Wimbledon singles title, defeating Tom Brown 6-1, 6-3, 6-2 in straight sets. This would be his second of three majors on the singles side. Now we go to 1952, but stay on the men's side. Frank Segman wins his only Wimbledon single titles, defeating Yaroslav Drobny 4-6, 6-2, 6-3, 6-2 to win his fourth of five majors on the singles side. One year later in 1953, on the women's side, Maureen Connolly wins the second straight Wimbledon and her third leg of the Grand Slam after defeating Doris Hart 8-6, 7-5 in straight sets. This will also be her sixth of nine Grand Slam single titles or majors. They're interchangeable. Now we have the World Cup in 1954 at the final, which pitted West Germany up against Hungary. West Germany got the victory 3-2. Hungary got out to the early 2-0 lead though after a 6th minute goal by Ferenc Puskas and an 8th minute goal by Zoltan Sibor. But West Germany would bounce right back though, cutting the lead in half 2 minutes later in the 10th minute off of a Maximilian Morlock goal. Then in the 18th minute with a Helmut Rahn goal to tie the game 2-2. This would be the score going into halftime, but then at the closing minutes of the game in the 84th minute, Helmut Rahn scored once again, giving West Germany the 3-2 lead. They would get the victory for their first World Cup title. Four years later, we're back in England at the Wimbledon men's final. Ashley Cooper wins his only Wimbledon singles title, defeating Neil Frazier 3-6, 6-3, 6-4, 13-11 to win his third of four Grand Slam single title. One year later in 59, on the women's side, Maria Bueno wins her first of three Wimbledon single titles, defeating Darlene Hard, 6-4, 6-3, for her first of seven majors. Move up to 1960 at the LPGA Championship, Mickey Wright, with a score of four under, wins three strokes ahead of runner-up, Louise Suggs, for her fourth of 13 majors. Back to Wimbledon in 64, on the women's side, Maria Bueno wins her third Wimbledon singles title, defeating Margaret Smith 6-4, 7-9, 6-3. This would also be her fifth of seven majors in her career. Now at the 1965 U.S. Open on the women's side, Carol Mann, with a score of two over, wins two strokes ahead of runner-up Kathy Cornelius to win her second and final major. Back to Wimbledon in 1969 on the women's side, 
and Jones upset three-time defending champion Billie Jean King after a 3-6, 6-3, 6-2 victory for her third and final major. One year later in 1970 on the men's side, John Newcomb beat Ken Rosewell 5-7, 6-3, 6-2, 3-6, 6-1, in five sets to win his third of seven majors. Five years later in 1975, on the women's side, Billie Jean King would defeat Yvonne Goulardon 6-0, 6-1 to win her sixth and final Wimbledon title, as well as her 12th and final major of her career. Now we move up to 1980, and we have another member of the 3000 Strikeout Club, Nolan Ryan, who at this point was playing for the Houston Astros, struck out Cesar Geronimo to become the fourth pitcher to 3000 strikeouts. 1980 at the Wimbledon Women's Final, Yvonne Goulardon beat Chris Everett 6-1, 7-6 to win her second Wimbledon Final and the seventh and final major. One year later on the men's side in 81, John McEnroe ended Bjorn Borg's streak of five straight Wimbledon titles after a 4-6, 7-6, 7-6, 6-4 victory to win his third of seven majors. Then at the 82 Wimbledon Final on the men's side, Jimmy Connors beat John McEnroe 3-6, 6-3, 6-7, 7-6, 6-4 for his second and final Wimbledon title and his sixth of eight majors. Also in 82 at the Canadian Open on the women's side, Sandra Haney with a score of 8 under won one stroke ahead of runner-up Beth Daniel. One year later in 1983, New York Yankees pitcher Dave Rigetti no-hit the Boston Red Sox in a 4-0 victory, 9-inch pitch, 4 walks allowed, 9 strikeouts on the day. One year later in 1984, only four years after Nolan Ryan would get his 3,000th strikeout, Yankees pitcher Phil Nitro strikes out Larry Parrish to become the ninth player to reach 3,000 strikeouts. Three years later, back at Wimbledon in 1987, Martina Navratilova earns her eighth Wimbledon singles title and her sixth straight after beating Steffi Groff 7-5-6-3. This would also be her 16th of 18 majors. One year later on the men's side, Stefan Edberg wins his first of two Wimbledon singles titles, defeating Boris Becker 4-6, 7-6, 6-4, 6-2 after a rain-affected final. This would be his third of six majors. 1992 now on the women's side, Steffi Groff wins her fourth of seven Wimbledon titles, defeating Monica Seles 6-2, 6-1, and her 11th of 22 majors. One year later on the men's side, Pete Sampras defeated Jim Courier 7-6, 7-6, 3-6, 6-3 to win his first of seven Wimbledon titles and the second of 14 majors. 1998 now on the women's side, Jana Novotna beat Natalie Tauzia 6-4, 7-6 to win her first and only Grand Slam singles title. One year later in 1999 on the men's side, Pete Sampras beat Andre Agassi 6-3, 6-4, 7-5, to win his third straight Wimbledon and his 12th of 14 majors. Now we're in the 21st century and we take a break from Wimbledon in 2000. Jockey Russell Bays scores his 7,000th career victory aboard This Is The Moment. What a fitting name. Bays in his career would end up being the winningest jockey of all time with 12,842. Now we move to 2004 at the UEFA European Championship Final. In a huge upset, Greece would defeat the host nation, Portugal, 1-0. For Greece, they would end up scoring in the 57th minute after an Angelos Caristias goal to give them the 1-0 lead, a lead they would not look back on, getting their first championship. Also in 2004, at the US Open on the women's side, Meg Mallon shoots a final round 65, 6 under, and would end up winning with a score of 10 under, two shorts ahead of runner-up Anika Sorenstam. This would be her second US Open title and her final of four majors of her career. Finally in 2004, on the men's side at Wimbledon, Roger Federer wins the second of five straight Wimbledon singles titles, defeating Andy Roddick 4-6, 7-5, 7-6, 6-4. This would be his third of 20 Grand Slam single titles. Now we move to 2006 and we have a new ODI cricket world record after Sri Lanka would end up defeating the Netherlands 443-9. to Back to Wimbledon in 2009, on the women's side, Serena Williams defeated her older sister Venus Williams, winning 7-6, 6-2 in straight sets to get her third Wimbledon singles title and her 11th of 23 majors. One year later in 2010, on the men's side, Rafael Nadal defeated Tomas Berdic 6-3, 7-5, 6-4 to win his second Wimbledon singles title and his 8th of 19 majors. 
We end today off in 2015 with two separate events. First at the Super Rugby Final, the Otago Highlanders defeated the Wellington Hurricanes 21-14 to win their first title. Then finally at the Copa America Final, Chile defeated Argentina 4-1 in penalties to get their first title. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. I do apologize if it was a long video. Tried to get through it as quickly as I could while giving you the information you needed to know. But I will see everybody tomorrow for Nick O'Dwyer and the 10th inning. Be good, everybody. See ya.